Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to illustrate monopolistic competition, another real world example of monopolistic competition with, uh, we'll have two separate videos going from super normal profit to normal. And in the next video, nor, uh, a loss to normal profit. And for our applied example, we could look at Netflix uh, as the subscription streaming service launched in 1997. Uh, but in particular, we could take a look at uh, how they went into streaming in 2007, which was when it was launched. Prior to that, they were mailing DVDs to people's homes. And then after watching, you'd return it by mail. But the online streaming service started uh, in 2007 along with a couple of other streaming services. Uh, Amazon was streaming around that time. Amazon Prime Video, I should say, uh, launching around 2006. And then Hulu also launching around 2007. But, uh, you know, the amount of content, maybe the quality of the video, really maybe not picking up too much. Um, and that explains why the stock price from 2000, let's say from 2000, uh, nine onward is relatively low, it goes from $5 to about $30, then it goes back down again. In 2012, it starts to rise. But then from 2012 onward to 2017, we see a tenfold increase in the value of the stock price for Netflix, reflective of the increasing number of subscribers that they're getting, uh, the increased revenue, the increased profit, and also the relatively low level of competition that they're facing. Um, allowing them to generate, let's assume, super normal profit. All right. So that's what we're going to illustrate first. Uh, and then we'll, in the second video, we'll look at uh, what has happened uh, recently. As you see, the stock price has collapsed significantly. That'll be the topic for the, the next video. Some quick um, review of monopolistic competition in terms of the assumptions of the model. We assume that there's a large number of firms, uh, generally speaking. Uh, substantial control over price, thus the firm has a downward sloping demand curve, but because there is competition uh, and substitutes, the PED is relatively elastic. And we also see in this market structure, um, firms really focusing on differentiating their product from the competition through either physical differences, the product, if it's a physical uh, product, making sure it's physically different from its competitor or quality differences. Um, or differences in location, services, product image, uh, the strength of the brand. In the case of Netflix and HBO and Amazon, they're really differentiating themselves from the content they're offering, the type of uh, shows that they've produced and they're offering that is exclusive and monopolized by them. For example, Stranger Things on Netflix is monopolized by Netflix. No other subscription or TV service can show those shows. Also, we assume no barriers to entry, whereas in the real world, there are some barriers to entry, but the model assumes no barriers to entry. Thus, firms can easily go in and out of uh, the industry. So here we have our uh, two models. Uh, again, at the top, we're looking at the industry, which is uh, subscription video streaming services as the industry, the industry being composed of the sum of all firms providing subscription video streaming service. And we're gonna look at one particular firm within the industry, in this case, Netflix. Graph A will illustrate Netflix generating super normal profit, whereas Graph B will show that in the long run, Netflix will gravitate towards normal profit as more competition enters the industry. So in this video, we're going to uh, highlight how we draw this model step by step. What I recommend is first you draw the supply curve. It has this backwards J shape due to the law of diminishing margin returns. We'll label this supply curve number one, which is equal to our marginal costs of production number one. And then we're going to have it intersect with our average total cost curve, which slopes down. And then once it equals the supply curve, it will then slope upward. And we'll call that average total costs one. Let me just refine that just a little bit. So we'll call it ATC, average total cost one. And I wanna be a particularly attentive to this point here, the point where 
supply and ATC intersects, this signals productive efficiency, but it's also going to help me um, uh, know where to draw my demand and revenue curve. So a lot of students are not quite sure where they should draw it. And I recommend that you first pay attention to this particular point, and then you're going to draw your demand curve, which is going to be relatively elastic. Demand will be sloping downwards, relatively elastic. And I'm going to make sure that my demand curve is above this particular point. I'm going to label this D1, which is equal to my marginal benefit, which is also equal to my average revenue. And then below this point, I'm going to draw my marginal revenue curve. Let me use a straight line for that. So below that, this, that point, I'm going to draw my marginal revenue curve. And then I'm essentially uh, done drawing the model. This will be marginal revenue one. We're going to assume that the objective of the firm is to maximize profit. So profit, let's draw this a little bit up further up. That's profit maximization. The rule for profit maximization is that the firm will produce where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. That's where the parabola of the profit function is at its highest point. And so here we see this is our MC curve. This is our MR curve. And so this is the point that the firm will stop, that they're going to increase their quantity supply all right, along their supply curve. They're increasing their quantity supply. And then once they see that the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost, then they're going to stop. And that will set their output. So output will be set at this point. So that will establish quantity of Q1. And at that quantity, the firm will price according to their demand curve. So that will establish price for the output at P1. And their costs on average at that quantity of output is right here. Here's the ATC curve. So their costs on average is right there. So that will be C1, which I can say is also equal to my average revenue one, average revenue equal to price, and C1 equal to the average total cost of production at that particular point. I can go ahead and shade in the area so we can easily see the supernormal profit that's generated. It's in this rectangular boxed area. The abnormal profit being generated by Netflix because they're not facing too much competition. Okay. Now, since Netflix is doing fairly well, 2007 to 2012, then to 2017, they're gaining more and more subscribers. Thus, the demand curve is shifting outward. And as it shifts outward, in this direction, it exposes the firm to this supernormal profit. But this wakes up competition. We saw later that Disney Plus enters the market um, and some other competitors. So if we take a look, uh, HBO Max, which is a reboot kind of of HBO, this was launched in 2020. Of course, HBO was there prior to that with their subscribers, but they've kind of um, changed their, their brand and perhaps their, you know, some other aspects of the company. Uh, then we had YouTube TV coming in 2017, and then Disney Plus being launched in 2019. So from 2017 onward, we can see that the level of competition is beginning to increase. And so now consumers have greater choice. And as they have greater choice, we start to notice that Netflix may be experiencing a you know, decline in their subscribers. Maybe they're losing subscribers over time. So that means that their demand curve is shifting inwards as consumers have more substitutes to choose from. So as demand shifts in, then their super normal profit will decrease and they'll end up at normal profit. So let's draw that in the next graph here. Again, we're going to draw supply curve first. Here we have S2 equal to the marginal cost of production 2. Then I'm going to draw my ATC curve. I'll label that ATC2. And the key here to draw normal profit, what I recommend is you have the demand curve gliding across the ATC curve, kind of tangent to this ATC curve. So I'm going to draw it like this, all right? Basically tangent to the ATC curve. 
and I'll label that D2 equal to the marginal benefit to equal to my average revenue to oops equal to then I got to draw my marginal revenue curve MR2 assuming profit maximization the firm will produce where MR equals MC this is my MR curve here's my MC curve the two intersect here MR equals MC at this point. If you find it helpful to label points, you can label this point A, A, B, C. I can label this point D, and at point D, MR equals MC. And so that will set output for the firm. Here we'll have output set at Q2. With the price according to their demand curve and their cost of production according to their average total cost curve. And we notice that here price and cost are equal. So here I can state that P2 is equal to C2 or average revenue equal to average total cost. Thus, the firm is generating super normal profit. I'm gonna label some additional points to help me with my analysis. Uh, maybe I'll label this point A in purple, point B, and where marginal cost equals marginal benefit, this point which would be allocatively efficient would be point C. And then here I can label point D, point E, and where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, point F. I'm gonna do that because in my evaluation, I wanna focus on uh, the fact that they, these monopolies of competition, firms in monopolies of competition are not allocatively efficient. So I'm going to illustrate the welfare loss. So it's visible between points B, A, B, C. Here we see the welfare loss, more or less. And then here we also see the welfare loss, the under allocation. Okay. And then I'm basically done. So I will provide analysis like I would on a paper one exam. As can be seen, we're illustrating the industry of subscription video streaming services. The industry is composed of all firms providing this type of streaming service. And in graph A and graph B, we're gonna look at one particular firm, in this case, Netflix. Graph A, Netflix generating super normal profit, but how in the long run they will gravitate towards normal profit in theory. On the y-axis, we're measuring price, costs, and revenue on both graphs. We're measuring the quantity of output on the X axes. We have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1 and S2 in graph A and B, upward sloping according to the law of supply, and it's also equal to our marginal cost of production. And we notice that the supply curves S1 and S2 intersect with the average total cost curve at their lowest point. That signals productive efficiency, producing at minimum ATC. We also have four downward sloping revenue curves. D1 and D2 are the demand curves, downward sloping according to the law of demand, equal to our marginal benefit, which is also equal to our average revenue. We also have a downward sloping marginal revenue curve labeled MR1 and MR2. And we'll also notice that the average revenue, just a little note here, we also notice that, ah, let me get rid of both of these. We also notice that the average revenue in both graphs is greater than the marginal revenue. And this is a reflection of the assumption that the firm does not price discriminate. I have another video that explains that in more detail, but we're not gonna focus on that explanation in this video. All right, so AR is greater than MR because the firm does not price discriminate. Assuming that the objective of the firm is to maximize profit, they'll produce where MR equals MC. So in graph A, Netflix will increase their quantity supplied until MR equals MC at point A, which sets the output at Q1. At Q1, they will price their subscription service according to the demand curve at point B, which provides a price of P1, which is equal to our average revenue. And their cost of production at Q1 is at C1. So here we clearly see that the average revenue is greater than the average total cost. So the firm is generating 
super normal profit. Uh, just a quick evaluation. We also noticed that with Netflix at Q1, the marginal benefit at point B is greater than the marginal cost at point A. Thus, Netflix under allocates. They're under allocating resources, so they're allocatively inefficient. And we also noticed that at Q1, the costs on average are greater than minimum, so there's a degree of productive inefficiency within Netflix. Supernova profit attracts competition. Disney Plus is launched to compete with Netflix to grab some of that Supernova profit. YouTube TV and perhaps some other subscription services like a reboot of HBO Max. As competition enters the industry, then consumers have choice and they may switch from Netflix towards those other subscription services. If that begins to happen, then Netflix demand curve begins to shift inwards from D1 to D2 that we see in graph B. So graph B illustrates that demand curve has shifted inwards and now Netflix is generating normal profit. They're gonna produce along their supply curve until marginal revenue equals marginal cost at point D, setting output at Q2, and at Q2 they'll price according to their demand curve, providing a price of P2, which we know is also equal to their cost on average. So here we see that AR equals ATC, thus Netflix generates normal profit. The idea being that in the long run, all firms gravitate towards no profit because super normal profit attracts competition. Again, at Q2, we notice that at point E, which is our marginal benefit, it's greater than point D, which is equal to our marginal cost. Thus, we see an under allocation. The welfare loss is shaded. And we also notice that at point E, the cost on average is greater than minimum. Ooh, um, so it's also productively inefficient. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and I'll provide some uh, outlines on this analysis in the information section below. Thank you so much.